negotiate moments like this, all right? And trust me, this this is the last place we should be celebrating, but most of the time. I'll make an exception this one time, because I know it's coming from the heart. Ah, good man. Now we hope your daughter would be here already. Uh, she's running late. She just got out of work. She told me she'd meet me at the restaurant. Okay. Well, in that case, a toast. All right? A toast with our cans of Pepsi. <laughs> To Detective Elwick, Matt, partner for the last three years. Mm. Where do I begin? You know, ever since I got that promotion, you have taught me many wonderful things, and you've inspired me and pushed me to always do the right thing. Thanks. But, like everything and all good things, things must come to an end. So, as you approach your final two weeks of duty, I wish you nothing but a peaceful retirement <coughs> filled with many great moments. Cheers. Cheers. <clears throat> nothing like a good kind of taste, huh? And you went all out, flat Pepsi? I mean, you really should have. <laughs> hey, uh, what's this? Oh, uh, it's nothing. Just me and some of the guys got you a little something. <sighs> should have. Nah, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you should <shouldn't> have. <laughs> the chicken man did what? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Look, the guys thought it would be funny, right? <laughs> well, it is. It's just the realization that all this is uh, coming to an end. Listen, Fred, you've done your fair share, all right? You work so hard every day. Enjoy it. You practically lived and breathed this work. And I just have you to rest. You know, my wife always said I never knew how to rest. Take it easy. Take a vacation. I miss her. I guess I didn't realize how precious our time was, but when she got sick, time just seemed to fly by. Yeah, Fred. It's tough to go through things like that especially in this kind of job, where you just have to be dedicated to it all the time. Yeah, I get it. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> thank you for this uh, lovely <laughs> And make sure you thank all the guys, too. I will. <laughs> all right, uh, let me get out of here. We get home Sarah and the kids. And uh, I'll, you're done with this, right? Yes, you can take I'll uh, see you later. Yeah, right? I will. Gotcha. Hey, uh, what's this? I don't know, they dropped off some mail while you were out. Detective Elwick, I have new information that you will find useful in reference to the murder of Diana Dugo. your dad can be running a little late. I need to take care of a few things. I look.
It just seems like you've grown up overnight. Really? Mm-hmm. Because I can remember you saying I was forever young and time dragged on and on with me. Yeah. Well, that was probably a moment when you upset me. And I always like time to drag. And you'll understand that one day when you're a mom yourself. How you always want to hold on to your children. <laughs> oh, and never, 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 never let them go. <laughs> so, tell me, where are you going? Come on. <laughs> going to Angela's. She invited me over. She's having a small gathering with a few friends. Anyone I know? No, Mom. <laughs> Boys. You mean men? Mother? I mean, yes, there will be a man or two there, I'm sure. I'm sorry. I'm just curious. It's in my nature. I know. I love you, Mom. You've given me everything every day of my life. And you took on the role of a mother and a father when Dad left. You never complained. Yes, sir. It is the role of a mom to always be ready to take to people because life can change so quickly when you least expect it. I'm sorry. You, you know why I act this way and do these things. I mean, Diana would have been 36 now. She would be celebrating her 20th high school reunion. Retiring, right? You don't have to study things so closely anymore. Sorry, it's just a few ghosts from the past. Troubles? I don't know. All right, what happened to you last night? You know the dinner was for you, right? I ended up telling stories about you. This mail that uh, ended up on my desk? Opened up some things I long since had closed, or at least uh, locked away. Yeah? Well, what is that in reference to? The case years ago. So what? Uh, you sold everything you always told me. That's what I told you. You to embellish the record of an almost perfect career, you might say. <coughs> I mean, I still hope I have a career like yours, so. This case. This case was different. It was like I was chasing the devil himself, but he just kept getting away. All right, why don't you tell me about it? It's bothering you this much that you really want to talk about it. Where did it begin? It was just like any other morning. Got into work early, a cup of coffee, three sugars. Even that? Yeah. But there was something different that day. Sure enough, my captain at the time said, don't get comfortable, homicide. Body found here in an apartment in Brooklyn. Now, that wouldn't phase most. But back then, in this neighborhood, it was like an earthquake hit. Who's the victim? Young girl. 16. High school senior. Honest student. Damn. She's gonna graduate in six months. What happened? What 
when I went to the apartment, it was the most violent thing I ever saw. It was blood everywhere. And there was a red bandana tied around her neck. Multiple stab wounds, Jesus Christ. And her face, her face was so peaceful. And her eyes were open, so I just went over and I, I gently closed them. My wife and I had our daughter three years earlier, so I couldn't even imagine what the father and mother of this young, peaceful girl would have to deal with. So that's just what came in the envelope. This case was never solved. I think I, I questioned everyone. I questioned everyone in the school. Uh, faculty, students, family, friends. For Christ's sake, I dragged the poor mother and father to the station with lead after lead after nothing. Not a fucking thing came from any lead. I really wish I knew what to say. There is nothing to say. I worked so damn hard. But I won't, one moment, ten years ago, Ms. Dugo's other daughter was graduating from high school. And I promised I would never call again unless it was to close the case. But this letter. It contains information pertaining to that case. All right, so what? Uh, so am I supposed to ignore this because of a promise I listen, made? Listen, Fred, you're not sure this could mean anything, okay? Listen, Jim, I'm a detective. Uh, it's my job to follow through. No, you're retiring. Fred, don't do this to yourself. You've done your fair share. Don't do this to her. The forgotten child. What? The headline said, "In this case, and all the leads rise." Fucking reporters. Listen, um, I'm all right. You sure. All right, look, we go now. Do you want anything? No, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. But uh, thanks for listening. Hello, Miss Dugo. I'm sorry I didn't catch you at home. This is Detective Bellwood. I know I promised not to call again, but something has come up. Please give me a call. I 
used to hear your cries at night, and there was nothing I could do to stop the tears. And I had to find a way to turn a page and make a new life. This is not a book, Mom. And you know that. I'll see her. For my sake, for your sake, I had to find a way to turn a page. Don't you care? Oh, Jess, how can you say that to me? I'm the one who carried her for nine months. I brought her into this world. I watched her grow, learn to walk, fall, ride a bicycle. Her first day of school. I'm the one who held her at night when she was sick. And then some bastard came in here and took her life from her and from me. And me too. I was here, I was here when it happened. I know, I'm sorry, I know, I know. And I thought something had happened to you. And when I walked into your room, and I found you asleep, I cried like I never cried before. Sorry, Mom. For what? For not looking out for her. Sweetheart, you were two years old. Still, she was my big sister. I wished I was awake. No! Look at me! We don't ever say that again. Because if you weren't, I would have lost both my girls that day.
just like that. I'm sorry. So am I. If you think that was easy, then please go to. None of this was easy. If you think a moment has ever passed, I don't wish I could bring your daughter back, or at least find the killer. You're wrong. It was always on my mind. You promised. I foolishly let you control my work by not following the lead. Because there's never anything to follow. And that's the whole problem here. We'll never know. Yeah. I will take to the grave for solving this case. And you, you will never have closure. Even if they find the monster that took my Diana, there will never be closure. Her death is like an open wound that will never heal. And no matter how much time passes, it will never heal. wanted to find an answer. I hope you know that. This, this has never happened before. I, I was always out to find the monsters. Yeah. Well, I think the day that they took my again, God closed his eyes at humanity and had someone out of hell just to take her away. Faith something we all have to have. I have faith. My daughter Jessica, she's my faith. You still don't? Yes. No matter what those headlines said, Diana was never a forgotten child. I know that. And I don't need you to tell me. Gift, huh? 
happy retirement. Hmm. On sign. Ha, ha, ha.